I found it on Rayma Radio. Thank you for listening to Rayma Radio, the weekly podcast of faith, culture, music, and more. I'm Veronica Ng, and today on location recording with me is the world's most traveled man. He has visited all 250 nations and held free concerts for all, including the poor, for presidents, and for royalty alike. All the while proclaiming the message of the gospel with great joy. A very warm welcome, Dr. Benny Prasad, and welcome to Malaysia. Okay, thank you very much. It's such a joy to be here. Uh, Benny, recently you have found your true love and got married. Can you please share with us this joyful happening? We got married on 6th of August last year. and My wife's name is Zan Benny Prasad, and uh, she is from the northeast part of India, from the tribe of uh, Lotha, and uh, both of us, we served as missionaries with uh, Youth with a Mission. Wow, both of you are missionary. So how did the first spark um, happen? Nothing, we just prayed about it because we both served in the mission field. So we had already met before. But uh, as we prayed and uh, we sought the Lord, we felt like God was leading us. So within three months, we got married. Your marriage is a nice highlight in your amazing life story. Um, As you shared with me, at the age of 12, you were accidentally hit by a javelin, resulting in damage in your spinal cord, suffering from severe asthma, which required you to take steroids. You developed rheumatoid arthritis, 60% lung damage and immune system damage, which threaten your life even right now. Sounds like you have a very challenging childhood. Well, I grew up uh, in a family where um, my father was an aerospace scientist and being the firstborn in the family, I was expected to become like him, which was a very uh, typical Indian expectation. And uh, also being the uh, firstborn uh, in the entire grand family, actually, and my siblings looked up to me to be a role model and I could not... Because in the Indian system, if you fail your education, it means that you have failed in your entire life. And uh, uh, it was really a tough childhood because constantly I was compared, constantly I was uh, uh, rebuked, talked that I was worthless and useless. And I grew up with this sense that I was born to be a useless person. And with uh, all these sicknesses that I was born with, even that deteriorated my um, my drive to live. What happened at the age of 16? And at 16, the doctors had given me six months to live and uh, I had no reason why I should be alive uh, because I failed in studies, failed in character and now I failed in my health also. I feel where you're coming from, Benny. It must have been really tough, isn't it, for a kid at the tender age of 16 And yet, today you travel around the world, sharing the joy of our Lord and bringing hope to millions. What turned your life around? Uh, As I contemplated to commit suicide, I went to a youth camp and uh, on the second I heard the voice of Jesus saying that, Benny, even though you are called useless, I still need you. And I can transform your life and make you a new person. I couldn't understand initially why, even though I was born in a Christian family, but going to church was just part of the tradition and the upbringing. But uh, when Jesus said that he could transform me and make me a new person, that was something very special because uh, I wanted to start my life all over again because I was just fed up with the past and with what I was known for. And it was only Jesus who offered me that change to start fresh in spite of what has happened in my past and uh, the scripture that came was that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come. So it was uh, it was a good deal for me. So I surrendered my life to Jesus. I gave up the idea of committing suicide and started off a fresh new walk as a Christian. It's a real transformation, isn't it? Yeah, I have been transformed by Jesus. Yeah, we need to surrender unconditionally to God and he will then take over. Look at our location for your interview and recording session today. 
It's raining so heavily with a thunderstorm just outside the window. I've been doing recording for over 20 years and I know that in this weather condition, there's no way we can avoid high noise level, except if it's a miracle. And yet my meter is showing normal levels. Praise the Lord. He's always in control and He has the purpose for every one of us. Well, in your case, not only the Lord loves you and wanted you, but even other countries were after you. You were offered citizenship from the USA, UK, Holland and Australia to ease your access to travel visas. But you refused and stuck to your Indian passport. Just look at your passport books in front of me. 14 passport books and it's a lot. Can you please share your reasons for sticking to your Indian passport? Well, I, uh, I was given the citizenships not from the very beginning. It was only halfway through. Um, but these would be an easy option or an easy way out. And I stuck to the Indian citizenship. Is, uh, the reason is because um, I knew that God created me as an Indian and also he would help me to finish the race that he started so that in this way nobody can take the glory or the credit for what uh, he did. And so I stuck to the Indian citizenship and uh, in this way I could also be an example to the other nations which are still developing and uh, there are people who think that they need to become an American or an Australian in order to uh, do something great and here I could use the Indian passport and be an example to the nations uh, saying that you know it's not about changing your citizenship but it is about knowing who God is and what his calling is upon your life and he is the same provider regardless of which passport you hold. Yes, I agree with you. We should be proud of our own identity. Well, hold on to that thought. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening to Rema Radio. Rema Radio. Hi, I'm Marian from Scripture Union and calling all youths, uh, students, uh, Christian fellowship teachers and youth workers throughout Peninsular Malaysia. If you are interested in how you can be starting off a Christian fellowship uh, in your school or if you're trying to seek to help your youths to grow in the knowledge of God's Word and to develop a love for Scripture, if you are a Christian fellowship teacher and you are struggling in finding resources to help to teach and guide your students in God's Word, then look no further. Come and visit our website today at www.su.org.my for more information. Rema Radio ooh, ooh, ooh. Welcome back to Rema Radio, the weekly podcast of faith, culture, music and more. Earlier on, we were talking to Dr. Benny Prasad about his life journey and now we're moving on to his amazing travels around the world. Um, Benny, Pakistan was the last country standing in your way to breaking the world record in becoming the fastest person to travel to every nation and getting the visa proved to be very challenging. You met your Pakistan benefactors in North Korea, of all places. Isn't it amazing how God works? Yeah, truly his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Would you like to share your experience with us? Well, um, Pakistan and India have a, a challenging relationship uh, in terms of uh, the political problems. And as a result, when I had even contacted the embassy, they had told me that there's only two ways I could get my visa. One, if I have a blood relative, and two, if the government of Pakistan invites me. So being uh, a person coming from South India, so we had uh, no blood relatives in Pakistan. So that was ruled out. So the other one was um, getting an invitation from the government was really impossible. And uh, I went for this hotel called Yangakto in North Korea during my visit. And uh, on the 32nd floor, as I came out of the lift, two men were walking into the lift and um, we just started to talk. And uh, I thought that uh, they were speaking in Hindi, but it happened to be Urdu. And they asked me, who are you? And I told them. And when I asked them back, who are you? So they said they were the official delegation from the parliament of Pakistan. So I told them that your country is the last country to go. 
and they said meet us at 10 o'clock in the night so at 10 in the night I took my guitar and went and played a song in their room which was diagonally opposite to my room and uh, in the end I just found out that it was the speaker of the parliament of Pakistan and he said don't worry about don't worry about the visa I will take care of it so when we went back to our respective countries he called up the ambassador of Pakistan in New Delhi and he said Benny is my friend give him the visa and so the ambassador calls me and says that uh, uh, come to the embassy in five minutes I've asked the visa officer to issue your visa so it was a miracle in every aspect one how can you meet the right people in North Korea and um, on the 32nd floor just when you're passing through the lift which means you don't even have a minute but uh, God made his ways uh, even in the most um, impossible and unseeming uh, locations are um, opportunities that he can still work it out. Still on the subject of amazing way God works, um, you were invited by the government of North Korea in 2012. You promptly shared the gospel with your two minders and got into trouble with the authorities. Not only did you explain your way out, but you were the only Indian among the 834 musicians to perform at the 100th anniversary of the birth of Kim Il-sung. Can you please elaborate on this astounding achievement? Uh, well, in 2012, uh, it was a very important year for North Korea as they celebrated the 100th birth anniversary of their founder, Kim Il-sung. And uh, the North Korean government always uses culture and music to propagate um, things. And it was a big celebration. So I was so surprised that when uh, the government chose me to represent India, It was a big miracle because it's very obvious that I'm a Christian and uh, the information on the internet is very clear that I'm a Christian. So everyone was surprised that uh, they could still choose me uh, in spite of my faith and uh, in, in spite of uh, uh, me being very vocal about my testimony. So when I arrived in North Korea, Um, I thought that there were other musicians too, but um, in between when I was invited to for the dinner at uh, the Indian ambassador's house is when I was surprised that even the Indian ambassador said that I was the only Indian uh, chosen to represent there for such an important event. Um, I was appointed with uh, two spies and, uh, and, and a translator. So for me, my contact with the North Koreans was through these three and uh, every day they were with me for eight days and so I used that opportunity to share my testimony with these three people uh, because you're not allowed to meet the others all that you do is you go to the venue you perform and then they bring you back so whoever was available is what I could make a difference with But since I played two worship songs, that allowed people who were artists from all over the world who could recognize some of these songs and then they asked me uh, more and then in turn I could share my testimony with them too. So it became a wonderful opportunity of doing ministry over there. Well, don't touch the dial. We'll be right back after this break. Hi there, are you striving to build a kingdom business? If you are, come and join us at the incubator. We are here to transform the marketplace through multiplying biblical entrepreneurs. Visit us at our website. It's called www. The hyphen incubator.com. It's incubator started with an E N. We are back. This is Rima Radio. 
Benny, um, although you do not have any education in design or music, you were credited with inventing three variants of Benta. The bonga guitar you designed in 2004, the 54-string guitar in 2005, and the 20-string harp bonga guitar. And in 2008, you were conferred an honorary doctorate for your banter and your travels as a musician. What was your inspiration for this amazing feat? In 2004, when I was invited to play at the Olympic Games in Greece uh, for the official welcoming of South African athletes as well as the uh, cultural stages, I was clearly told that I could not share my testimony, but they just wanted my music. And since I have experienced how much Jesus has transformed my life as well as he has given me this amazing future, so I could not uh, keep this good news just for myself. I wanted to share it to the world. And so I prayed and I asked Jesus to help me to design a guitar the world has never seen so that this guitar will attract the athletes as well as the audiences to come and look at the guitar and ask me questions. And in turn, I could share my testimony back to them. So that was the reason why I designed the guitar. And it's truly uh, the idea that God has given. And uh, it's used only to bring glory to His name. Your concerts worldwide are free. How do you cover your basic expenses for travel, accommodation and food? Yeah, from the beginning, I made it a point that I will never charge for my concerts. In fact, I had four financial principles when I started to travel in 2002 onwards, when God gave me the vision to travel to every country by 2010. And of course, being a YWA missionary at the time, I only had $25 a month. So since this was a plan given by God, I asked Jesus to be my provider and I had four financial principles. That was one, I will never ask for money. Two, I will never borrow money. Three, I will never take a loan from the bank. And fourthly, I will never trust the credit card. So with these four financial principles, I started off my travels. And every performance I did, uh, I would never charge. And it was up to people whether they want to give or not give. But... Uh, their giving never uh, meant that I'm going to perform or not perform. So money never made a decision in uh, my ministry, in whatever I did actually. And that became uh, a testing point at times, but uh, people watched me for so many years and they were really amazed uh, at how Jesus was so faithful in providing and which we all know that. You know, nobody doubts that Jesus does not provide or nobody doubts that he is not faithful. But you see their actions reveal their doubts. Is uh, Can God really provide is a question. Uh, or do you think that really Jesus is faithful to the promises he's given us? But in my case, uh, I stuck to that from the very beginning. Uh, through ups and downs, I, I did not uh, deter from the principles that I had in my finances. And till today, one thing is I've learned to live a simple life. And uh, uh, I supported myself through my CDs. And even the price of the CDs were decided by, this, uh, by the people who came. And they would give anything they want. And the money that I received was always more than what I needed and I stayed with families wherever I went I hardly stayed in hotels or ate outside so whatever people took care of me was enough for me and uh, in that way my cost overhead cost was really less and uh, I lived a very comfortable life uh, and I, I tell people that all I had to do was give up my right to comfort and food and um, and I just enjoyed whatever was provided and I ate whatever was placed in front of me and I enjoyed this journey actually and I have no regrets at all. Amazing. Benny, thank you for your awesome testimony. 
We all enjoyed your sharing very, very much. You are truly an example of God's work and miracles. Well, we have come to an end of the interview. Is there a take-home message you'd like to speak to our Rayma listeners? Um, so my my prayer um, and my wish for everyone is that if Jesus could take a useless, worthless person like me and transform me and give me a future like this, that there is hope for everyone and all that you have to do is to call on Him and He will answer you. God bless you all. Thank you once again, Benny. For more inspiring stories, tune in to Rayma Radio. This is Veronica Ng, together with Dr. Benny Prasad, signing off. segment's episode features music by Benny Prasad. Today's episode is edited and mixed by Veronica Ng. Stream or download new episodes weekly on Friday evening. Like us on Facebook to find out the latest from Rayma Radio. Leave us a message and let us know what you'd like to hear in future episodes. You don't want to miss Pastor Lee Kwan Ming, The Call to Holiness, Share the Glad Tidings Pataling Jaya in the next segment. God bless. Your own face.
Radio is a non-profit initiative by the Love Malaysia Media Project. Time, talent and treasure is put into creating the content you listen to. Your support enables us to keep this going and expand further. Log on to www.raymarad.io/support to find out how you can partner with us in creating value-adding content that ministers to the masses. Once again, that's www dot raymarad dot io slash support. Let's get the word out there. You're listening to Rima Radio. 